All right, we're going to begin. We're going to begin this morning with a prayer by City West Point City Councilman Jerry Ledbetter. Well, first of all, let me say this. Good morning, West Point. It's good to be here today, right? After all, we're supposed to be a little excited. Have you had coffee this morning? Most of you are a little sleepy, it looks looks like. But uh, let's do the greatest thing that we can do as people. Let's go before God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are so grateful for the fact that we live in a free land where we have the right to peaceable assembly. Where we get to hear from those who seek our permission to serve us as they seek to represent us in the halls of Congress. We are a blessed people. Help us listen to their voices and examine our choices in order to make clear, sound decisions concerning the right people to lead us forward. We thank you for the men and women who have sacrificed much, including their very lives, in order to guarantee our right to vote. May we never fail to repay them with diligence and determination in keeping our nation free and our rights secure. Give us your wisdom. Grant us your discernment, your heart. May we and our elected representatives in every office seek to do no more or no less than to seek justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you. For we offer our prayer, this prayer, in the powerful and freedom-giving name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Jerry. And thank everybody for coming out. And, and again, welcome to West Point. My name is Steve Trammell. I'm West Point City Mayor. And I'm so happy to see everybody here. And I'm so honored to have the list of attendees that we have here in our, in our fine city. We've got... Today, of course, we've got Doug Collins, our congressman, soon to be the next senator from the state of Georgia. We have another congressman. We've got Congressman Drew Ferguson here. We've got, in my opinion, the best governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, here today. We've got the Georgia Agriculture Commissioner, Gary Black, here today. We have our sheriff from Troop County, Sheriff Woodruff is here with us today. We have our county commissioner, Lewis Davis, he's here with us today. And I hope I haven't forgotten anybody else, but we're so honored that you're here with us today in West Point. They have told me today that I've got to keep this short. They gave me three minutes, and if you all know me, that's just fine for me. I'm not a big speaker. I like to get back to work. But I've had to do a lot of talking lately because Doug Collins has been to town he was here back in July with us, and it was an honor then, and we're so honored to have him back again. But after, after Doug left, I had so many people come up to me and wanted to know, well, why should I vote for Doug Collins? And that led to a long conversation, which I like short conversations. I had to tell of all the many accomplishments of him from working in the Georgia State House up through the, you know, the Congress and many things he's done and, and, and represented the president so well. It just took a really long time to do that, and, and I was honored to do it, but now I'm so thankful that when people come up to me and say, why should I vote for Doug Collins? I'm going to say, well, haven't you heard? Mike Huckabee has endorsed him. <laughs> it's going to be easy now. So with that, I'm going to pass this over to Congressman Drew, our native son of West Point, Congressman Drew Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks for, for your hard work. Um, yeah, everybody to ask me, said, how do you stand Washington, D.C.? It must be so tough politically. It's nothing like local politics. Uh, we have our fights through TV cameras. When you do something here at the city level, you get chewed on by somebody in line behind you at the grocery store. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a little different. So thank you for what you do, Jerry. Thanks for what you're doing. I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to, to our county commissioner, Lewis Davis. Lewis, when you first ran, you made a promise to this community that you would be here to support us and to be our voice um, with, with the county. Thank you for all that you do. You have kept that word, and I am honored to call you a friend. And 
and, and cast my vote for you uh, last week. So thanks for what you do. You know, we're also very fortunate to have one of the most professional people, one of the smartest guys, and one of the most decent human beings leading law enforcement in Troop County. Sheriff Woodruff, thank you, thank you for what you do, and we're proud, we're, we're proud to support you. Folks, we've got 11, 10 days left now. 10 days. You're going to get to make a choice between for direction of this country. Is it going to be about freedom? Is it going to be about the right to do what you want to do in this great country? Are you going to have the economic opportunity, the safe places to live? Are you going to have choices about how your children are educated and the freedom to be who you want to be in this great country? Or are you going to vote for socialism? And it's that clear to me. And I, I, I get to stand on the House floor every single day, and I listen to what the socialist Democrats try to push to America every day. And it's real, and it's something that, you, that, that is terrifying to me. Because let me tell you what it means. It means loss of opportunity. It means that future generations won't be able to do the same thing that we've done, and future generations won't have the same freedoms that we have. And I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more proud to stand with our President Donald Trump. Because let me tell you something. We, we are in a fight, but we will win on November the 3rd. We will continue what, what the, the good work that the President has started. And let me tell you, I say this all the time. He is willing to do everything he can for you. And he is the only thing standing between you and socialism. And let me tell you, one of the reasons that I proudly endorsed Doug Collins very early on, besides the fact he's a great man, wonderful father, a good friend, he's a conservative leader, not only here in Georgia, but around the country, somebody that inspires really great things, and, and he inspires great actions by his colleagues. But let me tell you what, what I have watched happen in D.C. with the battle and impeachment and how they go after our president every single day, let me tell you who's been strong and stood right there and defended the president and beat down Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler and Nancy Pelosi. It is my good friend, Doug Collins. This is, this is a jungle primary, and they're going, to be, they're going to be two folks that get into this race, and they're, going to, and they're going to have to battle it out until January the 5th. In my opinion, I don't want to send someone into that fight or the, the fight to defend the president that doesn't know who she is, that doesn't know what she stands for, and hasn't been tested. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Collins has been tested. We know where he is. We know what he stands for. We have seen the fight that he has, and he has never once backed down from it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm supporting Doug Collins. I'm asking you to do it as well. He is one of the finest folks that I have ever had the pleasure of serving with. So with that, I'm going to call up another dear friend, someone that I think is doing a remarkable job for our state. That is our Ag Commissioner, Gary Black. Now, why is it so important to have Gary here? Besides the fact he does a great job for our farmers, which means that he's doing a great job for you, but he's a leader in our state. And I think it's important when, when leaders band together to show their support for someone, I wanted Gary to come down here. So Gary, it is my pleasure to introduce to you to my hometown, my folks and people I, that I am so honored to serve and the people that I love, Gary Black. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Congressman. My friend Drew, good to see y'all. Y'all ready for victory pretty quickly. It's on. I smell it. I hear it. Don't y'all. Now, let's tell you, I come to I got to stand up first. I'm relieved at one thing. Uh, I noticed some uh, some red and black here. I, I see some orange and blue. I thought it was at a I hate, I, hate, I hate Alabama rally, but it's a college rally. So uh, that's okay. We can all share in that. We've got commonality. We're going to, we got, we, we got a universal opinion about two things this morning. So, uh, y'all, uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, thank you for being willing to stand. Uh, thank you. We've got we've got our work cut out for us. We've got a lot of work to do, and I hope we can kind of talk about a couple of those little details right now. Uh, I come from the generation of, and judging by some of the color of the hair or the lack thereof uh, here in this crowd, uh, the generation where one of the great motivators I can remember as a youngster was. That great coach, Vincent Lombardi. I don't know if there are Packer fans here, but uh, I don't know that I am, but I'm a big uh, 
uh, big, big, big follower of Lombardi always was. Here's, here's the deal. Uh, a lot of people don't know it. I really believe we're at this time with respect to this particular election where we're down to those fundamentals. You know, Coach Lombardi, Coach was all about fundamentals. I don't know if you remember hearing the stories, but with all those guys like Paul Horning and Jerry Kramer and Bart Starr, this those old gnarly football players. But you know what happened during summer training? The first thing that would happen each summer training, Coach stands up, the first words out of Coach's mouth are, gentlemen, this is a football. Now, it, do, it doesn't get much more fundamental than that. To reintroduce those folks, and then how do you win games? It's blocking and tackling. Folks, we've got some blocking and tackling to do over these next few days. But there's another fundamental issue that I want to bring to your attention, and I'm going to ask of you to go, all of you to go look. You don't have to take my word for it. I'm going to ask you to go look at some things because there's some things that, you know, the fundamental delivery system that we can, believe, we can bring to deliver some votes in the coming days but there's also some things I believe right now that are fundamentally wrong. Uh, there's a lot of money out there. And I'm going to tell you what, when you take that money and when you attack my friend with it, I'm going to stand up. I'm, I'm thanking you for standing with Doug Collins today. I'm all about the American dream. But particularly, just in the last week, I've been deeply concerned about some of the fundamental problems of where some of the money's coming from. I think it was reported last week, $9.7 million in a, well, it, it is a, it, it's a PAC that has a name, has an acronym, but it's, uh, it's just one of those things that just bothers me when you look at the report because it's basically been nameless all along, but the names came public last week. 17 people, 17 groups contributed nine, uh, almost $10 million trying to deface the name of this good man, trying to tell you things that are not true, and filling my mailbox full of magazines, of uh, mailers, uh, who would think to, to take that part of that money to try to tell me, my good friend's not, a, uh, not a, a warrior on the behalf of life? Are you kidding me? It's time for us to stand up, folks. It's fundamentally wrong to do that. Now, Sheriff, as we said a while ago, it may be legal, but folks, citizens of West Point, this part of West Georgia, it's just not right. It's just not right. It's time that we stand on the side of right. There was a prayer earlier. It's not about whether we're going to be on God's, or asking God to be on our side. We need to be on His. We need to turn to Him. And, 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 we, and that's just, uh, there's, there's things that are not going on that are not right. I hope we're going to heal when this is over. But uh, I'm embarrassed, actually. But I'm confident we have the right man running. I'm confident that my friend's going to win. And I'm confident with your fundamental help of turning people out over this and these next few days, we're going to have a, a United States senator that I think is going to lead us in this next generation and we'll be very proud of. I am honored. Uh, and if, uh, I, I'll tell you this, I haven't told him yet. I, 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 you know, we, we get to vote for a lot of different things. Uh, I never lived in Arkansas, but I'm thankful a couple of times I've gotten to vote for him. <laughs> and uh, he's, he is, a, you talk about American patriot. You talk about a man who is a, a, a cornerstone of, of conservative values. And ladies and gentlemen, what I believe, he's one of those loud voices of the conscience of America. Y'all help me welcome Governor Mike Hook. Thank you very much, Gary, and thank all of you for coming. I want you to see these boots. I got them last night in Nashville. It says, Keep America Great. There you go. And you know what? We're going to, if the president is reelected, and wasn't he great last night? I thought it was just pitch perfect. But the other thing we got to do to keep America great is make sure Doug Collins is the next senator from the state of Georgia. But some of you may wonder, why am I here? I don't live in Georgia. I can't vote for this guy. But as soon as I heard that he was running for the Senate, and he will attest to this, 
He didn't call me and say, would you come help me? Would you endorse me? Because he knew it wouldn't help him a whole lot. <laughs> Might hurt him. I called him. I said, what can I do to help you? And I'm going to tell you why. Because I've watched this man as he has stood. I started to say toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jerry Nadler. Basically, Jerry Nadler, it's face to waist with Doug Collins. But he's been willing to fight, not just for you, but for all of America. And I've watched his courage, I've watched his conviction, and I've watched his amazing God-anointed communication skills, and I've said, we need that guy in the U.S. Senate. That's a leader that America needs, not just Georgia. Now, Doug and I share some things in common. We've both been pastors. Uh, you know, when I ran for office the first time, it's been almost 30 years ago, I never will forget people didn't think folks like me or Doug should run for office. And I remember a lady came up to me in the little town of Malvern, Arkansas. She said, is it true you're an ordained Baptist minister? I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, I want to know, are you one of those narrow-minded Baptists that believe that only the Baptists are going to heaven? I says, no, ma'am, actually, I'm more narrow than that. I don't think all the Baptists are going to make it myself. <laughs> and there was another lady came up and she said, I want you to know, I don't think people like you ought to get involved in politics. You ought to stay out of it. It's nasty business. And I just want you to know, I did not vote for you the last time, and I'm not going to vote for you this time. Sir, I would never vote for you under any circumstances. I wouldn't vote for you if you were St. Peter. I looked at her and I said, lady, if I were St. Peter, you wouldn't be in my district. <laughs> I just marked her down as undecided and kept going. Look, I know the big disappointment today is that it's not my daughter here instead of me. I get that. She's way more popular, understandably and rightfully so. And I want you to also know that we tried really hard to get a Huckabee in the White House, and we got one in there, just wasn't the one I thought it was going to be. <laughs> And I've told people, I've got to get this off my chest. Donald Trump was not my first choice for president. I was my first choice for president, but he was my second choice. And I am so grateful for the job that he has done for us. And folks, I hope you realize that there is a lot more at stake than just the party. There's a lot more at stake than the personalities. I get it that sometimes the president's personality can just rub people the wrong way. I understand that. But you've got a choice between two doctors. You've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. One comes in and sits down on the bed, and he holds your hand, and he's so kind and sympathetic, and he even cries. But he's only done the surgery twice, and both patients died. The other doctor comes in, and he's a little rough around the edges, and he throws everybody in the family out of the room. And he says, look, I haven't got a lot of time for small talk. you got any questions, you only get two, and let's get with it. But he's done that surgery 800 times, and all of his patients have lived. Who do you pick to do the surgery? <laughs> Folks, we need Donald Trump to be reelected. Thank you, Train, for affirming that. The Trump train. That's, that's exactly what that probably is. Look, that train's got more energy in the horn than Joe Biden's had in his entire campaign. I'll tell you that right now. Only time I've seen where a person in a presidential debate, I thought he was going to fall asleep right near the end. And he's looking at his watch and wondering, man, it's past my bedtime. i got to get out of this thing. I, I can't believe that that's the best the Democrats can put forward. But I can believe that there are a lot of Democrats and liberals and the leftists, the AOCs, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Jerry Nadler's, the Adam Schiff's, they don't want Donald Trump back. And the reason they don't is because he's fighting a battle for you. He's fighting to secure our borders, keep our taxes low, make it possible for small business owners to be able to stay in business. And the other side would love to turn us into a socialist country. I'm going to tell you something, Donald Trump needs some help. It's great to re-elect him, but we better have some courageous, strong voices in Congress. And this guy right here, Doug Collins, is one that you can count on to stand with the president, but more importantly, to stand with and for you. 
Now look, I'm going to tell you this very clearly. I don't support people if they're not pro-life. That's an issue to me. It, it's not political. It transcends it. It's a moral issue. I do not understand how anybody could believe that the greatest nation on God's earth could ever endorse and ordain the taking of the lives of unborn children. I just don't understand that. And one of the reasons I'm here today is because Doug Collins is not a recent convert to being pro-life. He's not somebody that took this as a political position. He takes it as a moral and spiritual position because he believes, as our founder said, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Folks, I believe the right to life, that right to recognize it from the moment of conception, that is a unique gift from Almighty God. And as I've said many times across this country, I believe with all my heart that this is one of the issues upon which God himself will judge us as a nation. How do we deal with and stand for the most vulnerable people among us? And I want you to know that Doug Collins is a person whose conviction on the life issue is absolute and sincere. And I wouldn't be here if that weren't true. I simply wouldn't. No matter how good a communicator he is, and he's one of the best I've ever seen, no matter how fearless he is when it comes to taking on in the entire Congress, and he's one of the best I've ever seen. No matter how effective he is in crafting legislation that's practical, that actually helps people, and he's one of the best I've seen. I, I still wouldn't have come today had it not been for my deep, absolute certainty that he is a person who stands for every human life as having value. And folks, I want to tell you something. I believe that the child with Down syndrome is equally valuable in the eyes of Almighty God as the captain of the football team. And I want to live in a country where we honor every single human soul. Now, I told you that we have a lot of things in common. We've both been pastors. There's one thing we don't have in common. He's also an attorney. I'm still supporting him. But let me tell you the difference between being a pastor and an attorney. And I don't know how he reconciles this. So he'll have to explain that. The job of a pastor is to take the most complex truths in the world and make them so simple that a five-year-old can understand them to the point of coming to Jesus. A lawyer takes the simplest things in all the world and makes it so complicated it takes a whole room full of $500 an hour lawyers to be able to explain it. I guess that's why he is perfectly made for the Senate. He can take it either way. But the good news is, he's a guy that breaks it down and helps people to understand what the issues are. Let me tell you the issue that's before us. It's sending people that not only will stand for the president, with the president, and fight the corruption that is just permeating Washington, but it's about also representing those basic values that you pray about every Sunday when you're sitting in the pew. When Doug Collins is in the Senate, your prayers are going to be answered by a person who will be praying the same thing you're praying and praying for God to intervene in this country, to pray that we will, as a people, repent and turn from our wicked ways and seek his face so that he will, in fact, heal our land. I'm so grateful that you're here today in West Point, thankful with all my heart that you've come. And I hope before you leave, you'll do a couple of things. One, commit that you'll go get some folks to vote for Doug Collins. And if you call your friends and say, have you voted yet? If they say, not yet, tell them, well, you know, I'd like to take you to dinner. Go over to their house about 5.30, pick them up. When you honk the horn and they get in the car, toss them a bologna sandwich and say, eat quick, we're going to the polls right now. <laughs> now, if they're not going to vote for Doug Collins, you be sure and tell them the election has been postponed till January the 15th. Don't even bother. But if they're going to vote for Doug Collins, do not let them sit at home. And before you leave, if there's some of these signs left, take one. Put it in your yard. We have rumors. I, I, I can't attest to them being true, but there are rumors that when people put these signs in their yards, their property values go up by 40%. 
I can't guarantee that. But you ought to give it a shot. I mean, just put it up for the next, you know, 90 days and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, well, then take it down after that. But in the meantime, put this in your yard, and it really will be a statement of affirmation for who I believe will be one of our finest United States senators in the entire country. I want you to please give a big West Point welcome to somebody that you know, that you love, because you're here today, but somebody I'm proud to stand with, my friend and your next U.S. Senator, Doug Collins. All right. Everybody happy to be here this morning? Everybody will go come on now. Drew, Mayor, get some more coffee out here in this thing. But you know what? I don't need any coffee. I just watched my president last night destroy on a debate. He really made the lead. I'm just fired up for the next 11 days. That's what we got to be about. Now, I do have to come up here, and, and I do say, you start off with Drew first. When you get Drew and Mayor and the Sheriff and we got everybody around here, when you start off, when I just want to say, when I come down here, I came down here in, in July, we talked about one around, and everywhere I went, it was just like, well, where's Drew? Well, well, Drew's coming, because he, he was a little bit late and we got around and he said, but everyone was talking about Drew. Let me just tell you, West Point, your native son here has not only left West Point, he may not be fixing your teeth, but he's fixing this country, and he is a rising star. He's not only there, he's going even further, and I'm so proud of Drew Burke. And Gary Black. I mean, how many other folks you want in this state? Gary Black, covering for our agriculture folks, our, our moral values, taking this state. Number one economy in Georgia is still our agriculture. I got the best number one ag commissioner in the whole of the world, yeah. and that is Gary Black right here. And if he gets really happy over here, if we get really a revival being breaking out, he's going to start singing here in just a minute, so we'll be good to go. But uh, also then, you know, you just heard why people trust my country. You, you just heard why that, that resonate voice of a lifelong commitment of, of not only pastoring but public service and being a part. You know those ladies that came up to you and talked about that. You know, I, I have a little bit of saying, you know, I think there'll be, I'll be pastors in there. And I'm asked all the time because I pastored for 11 years. And somebody once asked me, they say, how can a Baptist preacher be, in, uh, be a politician? And Mike, I just had to look at him and say, any of y'all ever sat through a Baptist deacons meeting, you'll understand completely. Yeah. We're already there. <laughs> But, you know, it's good to be back down here. Because we're right now, I don't know about you, but we're in a battle. We're in a battle and we need fighters. We need a battle with conservatives who are willing to go out and stand up to the left who wants to take and destroy our country and turn it in a different way, who seem to like the values and, and the prospects of our Constitution, which says that every person has a chance and every person is equal. My old uh, Bible school time told me that red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. And it's conservatives who actually believe that. It's time for us to say something about it. It's time to provide economic opportunities. It's time to look after our coach community. It's time to make sure our schools and our, our, our places are happy so that our people stay at home. And at Georgia, in particular, because that's why I'm 54 years worth of Georgia right here, is that Georgia takes this leading position in this nation. Because I think when you look around Georgia, it's been made great by conservative values. It's been great by the people of Georgia. And we're going to continue to represent that as we go forward. But I'll tell you what I have been fighting over the last few years, and you've been watching it. And many of you talked about it this morning. I've been fighting. What I have seen is an attack on our country. I've been seeing is an attack started before he was elected president when they went after that little corrupt cabal of Comey and Strzok and McCabe and all of these folks. You know, they went after Donald Trump because he said one thing. He said, I'm going to do something to shake up this country. I'm going to do something to bring it back to its roots. And they don't like that. When you, when you get in that mess, they don't like it. And so they've been attacking him. And so when Nancy Pelosi, yeah, she became Speaker of the House. We knew, yeah. We, we knew that it wasn't about the American people. We knew that it was about an agenda to take us further away from individual liberties, individual freedom, and telling you that a government is what works best for you. And then when they started attacking they, the Mueller report, and it was the sham impeachment, it was one after other. I tell you what, I, I looked around, and frankly, Mike, I'll tell you something, I saw some folks stepping back on our side. I saw some folks saying, well, they'll just get this out, they want, but I'm going to tell you this, when I see someone attacking the very values of our country, when I see them going after a president, when I see a coup that didn't vote, that they wanted to take out a duly elected president, I said, not in my time, not in my watch, Jerry Nadler, I will stand up and fight you every day of the week. And that's what we're going to be. And you know what it is? I've had so many people come to me, and they, they tried to say this early on. They said, Doug, you're a conspiracy theorist. Doug, you're just shilling for the president and everything. But you know what? Every time I released a transcript, every time we went out and talked about what we were saying, every time we peeled that onion back, you know what we found? We wasn't wrong. We were even more right than what we thought. 
And over the past week or so, if you notice what's happening, I'll tell you right now, Joe Biden should not have been really at the debate last night. Joe Biden should be preparing for a deposition because when they figure out that Hunter Biden was actually doing it, then we understand it. And I don't say that lightly. But you know something? There's somebody, I, did he just forget to go get the laptop? Paging Hunter Biden. While the rest of the world was looking for Hunter Biden, he was looking for his laptop. Guess what? The FBI found it, and there needs to be an investigation into what's in there. Because I don't want, I don't want somebody who wants to be president of the United States to have entanglements like that. They tried to say that Donald Trump had Russian collusion. We found out that was uh, Hillary Clinton trying to beat him. But you know what? We have, we have a direct commitment now. We need to actually do this because this America is worth fighting for. I need your help here in West Point to go to the Senate and continue to fight to make sure we hold our government accountable to us. When you understand, though, you got to understand where you come from. For me, I've met many of you. Some of you have heard me. You've watched me from afar. But I always like to do this, and we've been all over the state. I, I sort of jokingly say, they say, Doug, what are you doing for the, for the last part of the election? So we started a 17-day, over 60-plus stops, 4,000-mile trip around Georgia. And we're doing it about three feet off the ground, 65 miles an hour in front of the family suburban right over there. And we're calling for your help to be a part of it here. Because I believe in getting out and telling people who you are. I believe in getting out and sharing your story. For those of you who may have just seen a TV ad, that's great. But as you've told, $35 million has been spent against me. And undoubtedly, if you can't spend $35 million to tell the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth today. And we're going to tell you the truth on why we should be the one representing Georgia. Now, understand something. Let's get it very clear. There's a, there's a ticket and a ballot going on. The first thing is we got to reelect Donald Trump for four more years. That's the first off this ticket. Then we got to elect David Perdue because I don't need to take a step back. We do not need John Ossoff in the Senate. We need David Perdue in the Senate continuing to do what he is doing. And then we need your help because there's a ballot that's going to look. And some of you who voted and some of you already told me, said this is the strangest ballot I've ever seen. And it's because it's a special election ballot. And that's the way the governor wanted it. So there's a lot of names on there. But I'm going to make it really clear. There's not any cameras here. We're all first friends. Everybody good with this? You want a secret? Everybody want to hear a secret? You think we get them a secret? Here, everybody lean in real close. Doug Collins is the third name on the ballot. All you got to do is bark it and you're done. All you got to do is on to the next one. All right. So it makes it easy. But why would I want to do that? Well, let me just tell you a little bit about me and what we're fighting for. I'm a trooper's kid from Gainesville, Georgia. My daddy's a Georgia State trooper for over 30 something years. I learned the values of conservatism and law in a home where my mom worked with senior adults and those senior daycare centers that you have here in Troop County and all over the state of Georgia. We took care of people. I learned what public service was by watching them go out. I used to think it was sort of funny is that uh, all these other kids that I went to school with, they used to say, well, we're going to the mountains, we're going to the beach, we're taking a trip on holidays. I worked, I, I was sitting at home and I'm saying, one day I'm saying, why don't we ever go anywhere? And dad would just look at me and say, I gotta go to work, son. You know, you learn these values at home. One of these is we understand that. I told somebody one day, they said, well, Doug, where did you go on vacation? I said, well, Vogel State Park in Gainham, Jekyll Island, because the only place a state employee went. And, uh, but we understood values. We understood what it meant to live and grow up in Georgia. As I, as I went along, I went to North Georgia College, got a degree there, and after that, uh, after a week after I graduated, the second best thing after my commitment to Christ came along, and that's Lisa Collins, and she's with me right here. 32 years. Just retired after 30 and a half years of teaching in our public school systems. I couldn't have made a half year. She made 30 and a half years of that. Uh, but we we grow and we raised a family. We started in our, our business and we, I worked with some business and then I answered a call on my life. And that was where I went back to being pastor. I served, got my master's degree, pastor a church for over 11 years. And then as we go along, I joined the Air Force. And in 2002, I was in, I had been in the Navy for a short time, joined the Air Force. I'm still in the Air Force as we speak right now. I'm a Lieutenant Colonel at Warner Robins, Georgia. Served in Iraq in 2008 and 2009. I don't need to be taught what the military folks in Georgia need. I am one of the military folks in Georgia, and I understand how important they are and how important your service for the veterans here means to that. The country that shines brightest is our military men and women, and I will not take a back seat, especially the Democrats who say there's a place for losers and other. No, they're the finest people in this land because they defend the very right for us to have a peaceful protest right here in West Point today. This is why we're a part of what we do. And then, yes, Governor, I went back to law school. Now, he's tried to ask, he said, how do you reconcile that? Well, number one, from my Baptist faith, the first time somebody said, you're going back to law school, and I said, yep. And immediately I'd backslid. That was it. You know, they just did fine. But the governor made something really interesting. He said, how can you be not only a pastor, but a, a politician, how do you can be to go from being a pastor to a lawyer? 
Well, number one, it's a great respect for our Constitution, but, but I want to go back to how you reconcile that, because you made a great point. But you know, I've always heard this. I want you to think about this for a minute. A pastor and a lawyer do the, do the same thing. I'll tell you this. They tell you the worst case scenario and the best way out. <laughs> and that's what you got to be. I mean, you want to know where eternity is? It's found in Christ. You want to know how to get it? you got to tell the truth, be honest, and don't get caught. And you need that. When you need a lawyer, you have a lawyer because our Constitution says you should get a lawyer. I'm tired of having Senator Leffer spend millions of dollars trying to attack lawyers in this profession because you know what? She put an ad out that said three people, Hispanic faces, which is horrible to start with, didn't deserve an attorney. The only problem was I guess her money didn't buy the truth because I never represented any of those people. I'm going to tell you right now, I believe in the Constitution. I believe in the right to counsel because I believe in the Second Amendment and the First Amendment. But I'm going to tell you something, Senator Leffer. If you want to lie about what I do as a lawyer, then I want to ask you a question. Did you go get a lawyer when you were accused of insider stock trading? I think you did. You know something? So let me just put it real clearly. Do you not think people who can't afford a lawyer are the only ones that don't afford a lawyer? Or only the ones who got caught? You see, we got to actually stand up for our Constitution. we got to stand up and have somebody in the United States Senate who can fight. But I do tell you this one thing. I know somebody who wished I had never went back to law school, and that was Jerry Nadler. <laughs> and I'll tell you another person who's very glad I went back to law school, and that's Donald Trump, because he was one who wanted me for this position to start with. And he told the governor that. So when you begin to understand what we're going through, I'll tell you this. As I've already started, as I look around here recently, if you think that I'll stand up and fight for this president, and you've seen me fight for this president, you've seen me fight for this country and stand for the values that I have, then you're going to have to understand also that there are three reasons that I run for office. There are only three, and they're not programs. They're not, they're not a, a plan or a bill. There are three reasons I run. It's Jordan, Copeland, and Cameron. They're my three kids because they represent your kids, your nieces, your nephews, the kids that you see in the streets because those are the ones in the future. They're the ones that's going to be sitting here, Sheriff. You do a great job protecting us now, but in the future, they're going to meet somebody else, and they're going to meet on this, this corner right here. They're going to meet in this park, and they're going to say, what did we do in 2020 to actually make a difference so that when they have their chance, that we stood for them for that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to have it. I'm going to say, I stood my part. I've elected Donald Trump, Doug Collins, and David for you. That's what we have to have right here. But if we have this, there's got to be some truth out. And the truth is this, and I've had this everywhere. We've been all over the state. I, I'm going to probably get a picture of this because for some of you, you're going to know who I'm going to fix to say. For others of you, you're going to have to go Google it, but that's okay. Everybody remember Paul Harvey? Yeah. Remember the ones in here remember Paul Harvey? And Paul Harvey would tell those stories, you know, and he'd get to the middle right before he was uh, going to break. He was saying, when I come back, I will tell you the rest of the story. Now, it's been pretty funny. For those who knew Paul Harvey out there, they all jump in and get it. For those younger folks, he said, who's Paul Harvey? Just go look it up. It'll be okay. But what you're going to find is he would tell stories and he'd tell you what was what you first thought, but you then found out the backstory. And I'm going to make it real quick this morning because many of you I've talked to and many of you have seen there's $35 million been spent in this race. $35 million. Now, I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. Go make as much money as you want. But if you're going to run a campaign, then at least tell the truth. Because if my granddaddy told me one time, you tell a lie about me, I'm going to tell the truth about you. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're doing on this tour. So I'm going to say it's the rest of the story tour. Again, Mike Huckabee's already told you he wouldn't be here if I wasn't pro-life. But there's a story that really got me. I said, why would Senator Leffer want to talk about me and pro being not being pro-life? I mean, I was in the Georgia House. I was elected when I was in law school. We had the ultrasound bill. We had the fetal pain bill. When it got to Washington, D.C., I fought against those very folks who actually said it was a good idea. You know how they, they actually promoted an article out of Sweden that said Sweden had gotten rid of Down syndrome. And I looked at this article and I said, are you kidding me? They said no. And what happened was that Sweden began testing and they began to killing all the kids with Down syndrome in the womb. That's not getting rid of Down syndrome. That's murder. That's what they were voting right there. And then we can't be doing that. We've been fighting against that. Life means that. But for us, it was really personal. 28 years ago, we found out Jordan, who my daughter is here today, she's one of those principals on why I run, I was going to ask my if somebody told my wife, you don't have to go through with the pregnancy, you can get rid of it. Lisa told her God gave us this child, God could take this child, but we'll never take this child. That's the commitment to life we have. But you understand that, then why would you actually take and try to attack me on life? So here we are in our audience participation board of the Baptist meeting this morning, and the rest of the story, the rest of the story is that Senator Leffler just don't want to tell you that she worked with her basketball team and had Planned Parenthood instead of setting up donuts, they came to hand out their propaganda. Planned Parenthood actually did a ticket share split with her. I want to tell you right now, I don't know about you, but being a conservative in Georgia is not working with Planned Parenthood, Senator Leffler. You may be trying to hide it, but I'm going to reveal it because you're not going to get away with it. Second Amendment. I'm a trooper's kid from Gainesville. You want to attack me on the Second Amendment? 
I've been shooting before I could ride a tricycle. You know, gun control, Sheriff, you know what it is. You hit what you shoot at. That's what the gun control is. Not taking our Second Amendment rights. I'm going to tell you right now, they get our Second Amendment rights, they'll have our First Amendment rights, and this town square will be not be anywhere at it. we got to understand this. So why would you want to do that? As Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. The rest of the story is you work with Michael Bloomberg. Yeah, can you believe that one? That Michael Bloomberg out of uh, New York who wants to take away our gun rights. This is what I'm saying. So that's not a conservative value. But then I'm going to hit the last one here for one, and i got something else to tell you. The picture with Stacey Abrams. I have a picture with Stacey Abrams. Well, if I'm going to say this, if a picture with Stacey Abrams, if they flash it all over the state, means that I'm trying to tell you that I'm not a conservative, then I just have a question for Senator Leffler. What does a video with you and Stacey Abrams on a basketball court where she's got Abrams for governor signs in the background, and you're promoting her as your attorney as an outstanding woman in Georgia? I tell you what, I'll take a picture working with Stacey Abrams, who joined us to keep the Hope Scholarship alive, more than I'll have my hired attorney, who I think is a good person. I'll live with that conservative back. But as we go forward here, it's about a bigger vision. Over the past few weeks, Senator Leffler has decided she wants to be tough on China. That's great. I'm glad she joined the party. There's actually a bill out there with Senator Graham and myself that said that we'll delist the 10 Chinese-owned companies on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, that might not sound like anything to you until you realize that Senator Leffler and her family own the New York Stock Exchange. If they didn't have to wait for a bill, they could delist those Chinese companies, state-owned communist countries right now, but they choose not to. They're choosing profit over policy. I'll always fight China, who is trying to take our jobs, take our people, and they're not going to do it as long as I'm on that watch. <laughs> Somebody asked me a question. I just thought I'd just, you know, you know, sometimes in debates you don't get a lot. We had a debate on money. So I just asked the question. I said, if you want to talk tough on China, that's fine. But there was a picture that was actually from, from your house that had a picture of Mao. Now, if you want to put a picture of Mao in your house, that's fine. That's your choice. I mean, the most hated dictator who killed more people than anybody in the world. But when asked about it, she lied about it. She said, oh, it's Photoshopped. And then they said, well, no, it may not be. Folks, I just have you a question. If, you don't, if you're not able to tell the truth about what's hanging in your house, what else is she deceiving you about? i tell you one thing. There's 11 more days. 11 more days, and on November 3rd, there's going to be a new senator from Georgia, and it's going to be Doug Collins. So I need your help. They've already talked about it. We have a vision for Georgia. You know I'm going to fight for it. You know I'm going from, from West Point to Gainesville, from Bainbridge to Tacoa, from St. Simons Island to Dalton, Georgia. We know this state. We know what it needs, and we're going to fight for Georgia. You need to send me back to Washington, D.C., not in the House. we got Drew Ferguson to take care of the House. Drew's going to lead in the House, but we're going to lead from the Senate side. And I need your help. Take these signs. I need to borrow your reputation. How many of you have already voted? Get up. Now, here's what I need. If you've already voted, like Sergeant said, find somebody else that needs to go vote. Give them a baloney sandwich. You can give them a baloney and cheese if they want it. Take them out to vote. But also, I need you to get on your social medias. Talk about today. Many of you are taking pictures today. Many of you are sending videos. Get that social media out. Tag us. We'll retweet, retweet and repost it out there because we have got a fight on our hands. I may not have $35 million, but I've got more than enough because I've got you. And with you, we will win this thing. God bless you, and thank you so much. And the mayor's back. <laughs> Listen, y'all, thank you for coming. We've got a table back here. You can show your support, come back here, and make a contribution to the Collins campaign right back here in the corner. Thank you all so much for coming. Is there anybody else on the agenda? I don't think there is. God bless you all. Ten more days, 11 more days. Let's get it done. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Appreciate you all.